meeting. Uh, and I will provide information uh, from this meeting. Um, I'll send out an email later today. It takes a little while for the, um, the files to render, but I will send the recording uh, at some point this afternoon. Um, or if there are more technical difficulties, I will send it out first thing in the morning, but everyone will get a recording. So if you have friends or family members that couldn't come today, um, we will have an opportunity for them to be able to watch. All right, let's get going here. Options for your future. So Fairfax County actually has a wonderful Google site with information about all of the different post-secondary options that you can pursue after high school. Today, we are going to be focusing on the four-year college route because that is where I'm getting most of my questions. Um, but I did want to put this slide in here because over the summer, you may want to join this Google site and take a look and see what is available. Um, remember that because this is an FCPS Google site, that the grownups in your life cannot access it because they have to have an FCPS uh, login. Um, so you will have to log in and you and your grownups can explore that website together. We've got a number of fall 2024 events coming up. Um, I will be um, sending this out. These are tentative dates, but we do believe this is our schedule for the fall. I often have students asking when things are going to be or wanting to put things on their calendar. Um, again, I will send this PowerPoint presentation um, I will send a link to it out to everyone along with the recording. So don't feel like you have to write all of this down. It is going to come to you in an email either later today or tomorrow morning. Um, excuse me for just a moment. I'm going to turn my phone down. Um, <laughs> so the week of September 3rd, our counselors will host this, a SOAR meeting in which we will go over a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna give you a preview for today, um, talking about your various paths after high school, um, talking about um, how you get your transcript recommendation letters, all those sorts of things. Um, again, you're giving a little preview right now. From September 9th through 13th, our counselors are going to pull you down one-on-one. -on -one. They'll go through your government class and they'll pull you down to their office and they will say, Okay, Fatima, what's your plan for after you leave Hayfield? Um, and the student and the counselor will talk about um, what their plan is and get questions answered um, and have some one-on-one -on -one time together. September 19th will be our senior night. That is where we will bring in um, some guest speakers um, from typically from apprenticeships and some career training programs, our military recruiters, and then we will also have a session on applying to NOVA and four-year colleges. And this will be predominantly for the adults in your life who are um, wanting to hear the same information that students would have heard in their meetings with their counselors. Um, that way we can make sure that everybody in your home is on the same page as far as what needs to happen. Um, one of my favorite things that we do is in conjunction with our Hawk Writing Center, um, and that is our college app camp. So these are, and you'll notice that there are three of them. Uh, these are times where we will uh, have the Hawk Writing Center tutors and the counselors and I, and we'll all be in one big room, usually middle school lecture hall, but I'm not sure what room it will be in this fall. Um, and we will offer just an hour for seniors to come in with their laptops and sit down and say, I'm stuck on my essay. I don't know what to write or... I'm all the way done with my essay, but I want somebody to proofread it before I submit it. Um, maybe we've got students who uh, need help with the Common App, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So it is just a nice little time. Some of them will be during SOAR, some will be after school, in which students can get help on their college applications. Um, so we've got three of those that we will host in the fall. Um, and all three of them will happen before November 1st. That is one of the big college deadlines. And we'll talk more about college deadlines in a few minutes. Um, also, uh, you might want to save the date October 9th. FCPS will pay for all high school seniors who want to take the SAT 
There will be registration information that will come out to you in the fall. You can't register for this special daytime SAT right now on the College Board's website. College Board's website only registers you for Saturday SATs. So there will be more information that will come from our testing coordinator sometime this fall on how to register for that SAT school day. And then uh, we have a financial aid and scholarship workshop that I will host uh, in person during SOAR um, on October 11th. And I will send information about how to sign up for that in the fall. Um, and then lastly, if you are still wanting to get in touch with colleges, still adding to your list, have some questions for colleges that maybe aren't going to visit Hayfield, October 20th, it's a Sunday evening, Fairfax County Public Schools hosts a huge college fair with literally hundreds of colleges there. It will be at Eagle Bank Arena, which should be the place that you graduate a year from right now. All right, so let's go on to our next slide. I thought I would throw this in here for you. What are the most important factors when a college admissions counselor is reading an application? What would you say is the top Second top, third most important thing. Go ahead and throw it in the chat. Let's see what you got. What do you think the most important things that a college admissions person is looking at? Okay, grades. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's get let's get some votes in here and we'll see. And then I'll show you what the answer is. Anybody else have an idea or a guess? Extracurricular activities, okay, yeah. Extracurricular activities can be important because they are looking for people that are going to come to their campus and get very involved in the different organizations and opportunities that they have on campus. So grades, extracurricular activities, anything else that might be on an application that a college is looking at? Volunteer work, okay. Personal statement, yep, those essays, absolutely. I haven't seen attendance. Actually, they can look at your attendance. Yes, that could be a thing. Um, one of the ones, I, I, what I'm not seeing is the thing that students stress out about the most. Um, so I'm surprised that nobody has guessed that one yet. Let's see if somebody does. I'll give you another couple seconds. Essay, yes, definitely essay. All right, I'll take one more guess and then we're going to go forward. SAT, ah, that's the one I was looking for. I would say that if there is one thing that my juniors and seniors are stressed out about the most, it is their test scores. So there is an organization called the National Association for College Admission Counseling, otherwise known as NACAC. And they are sort of the, um, the, uh, Governing Board Professional Association for people like me who work on the high school side, helping students with college admission. And it is also the organization that people that work in admissions offices at colleges join. People from both sides are part of that organization. Um, and so that organization did a poll of high school students and asked them to rank in importance what students thought were the most important things a college looked at. Here they are. And I'll let you stop and look for a second. So according to students, this is what they thought were the most important things. So grades in all courses and admission test scores, the top two things according to students. You wanna see what how the colleges answer that question? Here we go. Look at that. That's a little bit different than what you probably thought, right? Look how low on that ranking list, whoops. I tried to highlight it and we went back. Hold on just a second. There we go. Sorry about that. Admission test scores is all the way down here. Also notice that the colleges, yes, are looking at all grades, but they're also looking at your grades specifically on your college prep courses. So they're probably gonna focus the most on your grades and things like math, English, science, social studies, world languages, right? Um, but also look what's in that number three slot. 
the strength of your high school curriculum. So not only are colleges looking for you to do well in your classes, they're also looking for you to try to challenge yourself as much as you can. That means different things for different people. Some students can handle taking four APs. Some students decide APs feel like too much for me and my stress levels. I'm going to take some honors classes. And so that's a discussion that you've probably already had with your counselor um, and with your family and deciding what works best for you. But just know that the more selective a college, the more they are looking at that rigor level and the more they are expecting to have lots of rigor and straight A's. And that is still not going to guarantee admission because they have thousands more people who are interested in that school than they have spots in their freshman class. Um, so we've got those at the top. Interesting that positive character attributes comes in third. So one of the ways that they learn more about you is obviously through your essays, sometimes through your recommendation letters. Um, I see that extracurricular activities is on there as well. Um, so those are all things that I think are interesting for students to see. I'm gonna stop right there for just a second before we go into college application types and see if anybody wants to throw a question in the chat before we go on. All right, I'm gonna keep on going. Mr. Matthews, by the way, I did not shout him out at the beginning. Mr. Matthews is in the chat and answering questions. And so I'll keep going. And if I see some questions that would be easier to answer um, by uh, uh, speaking, then I will do that. And if it's a quickie one, uh, Mr. Matthews can put in the chat. Thanks, Mr. Matthews. I'll give you a thumbs up back. So college application types. I would say probably the college application that you are going to use the most this fall is called the Common Application or the Common App. There are over a thousand colleges that use this application. And the reason it is great and very convenient is that if you think about it, when you're applying to college, everybody's gonna ask the same stuff, right? What's your name? What's your address? What high school do you go to? Um, what's your email? address, all the basic stuff, what kind of activities did you do, all those sorts of things. All the colleges are asking the same stuff. So rather than you repeating and putting that information in over and over and over again, the common application is one common application for all of these colleges, which means it saves you a lot of time in the fall by having um, using that common app and being able to only have to put in a lot of that stuff one time. And I'm gonna show you um, some more information about the, college, the common application soon. Um, the coalition app was a startup application a few years ago. Um, it's not used as much anymore. And most colleges who use coalition also use the common app. Um, so I'm gonna say in most cases, you're probably not ever going to use the coalition application, but I do like to make sure that people know it exists. There is also a specific Kaylee, yes, there, there are overseas colleges um, that you can use the Common App for. If you go to their main site, which is commonapp.org, you can actually see a list of member colleges. And I think you can even sort it by country, if I recall correctly, unless they've changed the interface there. Um, and then there's also a Common App for historically Black colleges and universities. It's called the Common Black College application. And you can apply to 66 HBCUs for a very low application price. Um, and then some colleges don't use the Common App. They just have their application on their website and you can just go to their, their website and apply there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about early decision, early action on this next slide. This is a lot, don't get overwhelmed with this, but there are multiple different timelines for applying to college. There are early ones, and those typically mean that your application is due somewhere in the range of October 15th, November 1st, November 15th, sometimes even December 1st. Um, so those early um, application deadlines are ones where you apply early on in the fall, 
And you also hear back relatively early. You might hear back like over winter break or in January is typically the timeline. Um, then there are other deadlines called regular decision. And those regular decision deadlines are typically in January and February. And then you get your admission decision by April 1st, typically. So we have a lot of colleges um, who uh, have both regular decision and one of those early timelines. Um, so that depending on what works best for you, you can decide when to apply. Um, there are also some colleges that have something called rolling admission. Basically rolling admission means that as soon as your application is complete and they have your transcript and whatever else they need, they turn around. Um, Osman, are, are you all not able to see my screen right now? Osman is asking, are we supposed to be able to see your screen? That's making me worry that you all can't see my PowerPoint. Okay. So Osman, I'm not sure what's going on for you. Um, but I will send a link out to this PowerPoint. Maybe try jumping out and jumping back in and seeing sometimes that can fix it. See if that works for you. Um, but so rolling admission is basically as soon as your application is complete, they'll turn around and give you a decision. They don't hold all of the decisions and release them all on the same day at the same time. Um, let's talk about the two earlies. Really, there are three earlies, but early action means that you are applying early, you're getting your decision early, but there is no commitment to attend that college. So if you want to apply early action to eight colleges or 10 colleges, you can. It is not a binding application. If you apply early decision, early decision means I've decided this is the only place I want to be. You are my first choice. If I am admitted, I will cancel all the other applications that I have submitted and I will uh, make my enrollment deposit and I'm done. You should not do early decision unless you know for sure that is the one place you wanna go and that you have run the, uh, the price calculators on that college's website and you know that your family can afford it because early decision you are making a binding commitment to that college without knowing how much financial aid they're going to give you, okay? So that is a very, very important thing to know. Um, <clears throat> oh, great, Mr. Matthews got that one, awesome. Um, so early action, act early, find out early, no commitment, early decision, I've decided this is the only place for me, I am committed to you. So that's the difference between those two. Some of the Ivy Leagues and some of those other super, super, super selective colleges also like to throw in a different kind of early called restrictive early action. And basically it's, it's kind of like a mashup of early action and early decision. Basically um, you are restricted to um, applying early decision, early action to them. Um, and no other institutions, except if it's one of your public state universities, they have different rules. Just make sure that when you're on the college's website, that you are looking to see what their rules are if they use that restrictive early action. Great question. What is the benefit of doing regular decision over early action? There are a lot of different factors that go into this. Um, so for some students, they don't want the anxiety of having to wait until April. They wanna know now, great, they can go ahead and do it. For some colleges like Virginia Tech, there is a huge advantage in the process by applying early action than over regular decision. Virginia Tech does a couple things weird. Please talk to your counselor if tech is on your list or you can come talk to me, I don't wanna spend a lot of time, but tech has some quirky things that they do um, with their application process, but one of them is that almost their entire freshman class gets admitted through that early round, and there are not many spaces left in that regular round. You can still get accepted regular decision, but I highly, highly, highly recommend, especially if tech is top, at the top of your list, that you apply early action. They don't have early decision. All they have is early action. But for tech, you definitely wanna do early action. There are other colleges, and this is a great question, when you're going and visiting colleges or talking to them, 
say what percentage of your freshman class are you accepting in early decision or in early action? And what percentage of your freshman class are you accepting during regular decision? If they're bringing in 75% of their freshmen in that early round, you know, okay, for that school, I really need to get my application in early. There are other sometimes places. Yes, Mr. Matthews is getting it, what I was just gonna talk about. For some students, if their junior year was maybe a little bit bumpy or maybe in the fall, they're gonna try more AP classes or their first AP classes, those students might want to wait and apply regular decision because your first quarter grades will not be on your transcript until early-ish November, uh, which would be after the early application deadlines. So if you feel like that college is really going to need to see some senior grades, um, and again, this is something you can discuss with your counselor, um, then you may want to hold off and apply regular decision so that you can show off how well you're doing in your senior year. Um, so a lot of it is a gray area in deciding which uh, option is going to be the most advantageous for you. Hope that answered that question. Okay, let's move on. All right, so we talked a little bit about the Common App. We're not gonna go through the whole website, but I just wanted to give you a screenshot really quickly. Um, so over the summer, if you want to, you can start your Common App. I'm going to tell you what you can start and what you can't start in the next slide. Remember, you have to use your personal email address. Do not use your fcpsschools.net email because colleges cannot communicate to you. We have a, um, a firewall up that keeps anybody who's not in FCPS from emailing you, which is a good thing. It protects you all. Um, but it also means that colleges can't talk to you on that email address either. So if you haven't already maybe created your own um, adult email address, not the one that you used in sixth grade that might have tiny and cute 34 at AOL, maybe you're looking for something with your first name and your last name, um, and use that for all of your applications. And that way, all of your mail, your college mail, your business mail is going to one account, and that keeps it from getting lost in all of the ads and the junk that you might be getting in your email that you've had forever. So my recommendation is get yourself a personal Gmail, Yahoo, whatever. Commonapp.org is the website to go to. And then once you're there, you're clicking on that little button that says create an account. Once you create an account and get in there, this is what the screen looks like. So you will notice that I have part that says it's okay to use anytime this summer and part that you should not use until after August 1st. So remember how I said there's a common part of the common application, which is all that same basic stuff that every college is gonna want from you. So that is your profile information about your family, your um, extracurriculars, your common app essay, all of that stuff. If you wanna get started on that this summer, great, go ahead. That will be in the Common App tab that I have highlighted in green here. You should not add colleges until after August 1st. The reason is, if you get really excited after my Zoom, because I just made you super happy and you're ready to do this, and you add Hampton University this afternoon, and you start filling out the Hampton University section of the application, you are actually filling out the application that the people who graduated yesterday did. That's not your application. And at the end of July, Hampton University is going to delete everything in there because they don't need it anymore. Those students have been accepted. They're done. And they will put their new Hampton University section up in the Common App after August 1st. So stay out of the college sections and stay in that Common App tab. Hopefully that was nice and clear. That means that you will not be actually putting in recommenders email addresses until after August 1st. You can certainly ask a teacher or a counselor for a recommendation now, but you're not going to put their email address into the Common App right now. Okay. There is a fantastic website called Access Companion. This was put together by Oregon State and some people who are private college admissions counselors. 
and they put it together to make a really helpful how-to kit for how to do the Common App. Um, and it is right here and it will also be um, in the program that I send you out. Um, but it can be used side by side with your Common App. There are tips, there's a glossary, there's a video that explains how to do every little part. So when your counselors and I are, are home or at the beach or wherever we are this summer and you're emailing us, I need help with the Common App, we're not going to see that email until August. So you can use this access companion to kind of walk you through different parts of the Common App. My seniors this year found it really, really helpful. So maybe you should bookmark this one on your home laptop so that you can use it um, starting whenever you start the Common App. You can wait until this fall to start your Common App, by the way. I just know a lot of students are eager and they wanna get at it this summer while they're not taking classes and they have more time, which is completely understandable. Okay, I'm gonna stop for just a second again and see if we have any questions about what we talked about so far. And then we're gonna get into the components of your application. Anybody have anything? And it All looks right. like there's not a raise hand function. So sorry, this is Mr. Matthews. Keep throwing questions in the chat and I will be glad to keep up with you all as Ms. Perfect. Ferguson continues. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Matthews. I hope you had your caffeine so you can type fast. All right. So like I said earlier, standardized tests are probably the thing that students stress about the most. But as you saw, standardized tests are not one of those top one, two, three, or even five things that colleges are looking at. Nearly 80% of colleges and universities in the United States will continue to be test optional in this next admission cycle. Test optional means that colleges allow you to decide if you want to submit a test score or not. Um, my recommendation is that when you are registering for the SAT and the ACT, they're going to ask you, do you want to submit your scores to this college? If a college is test optional and you have the option of whether or not to submit, my recommendation to you is that you do not list that college on your registration, but that you go ahead and take the SAT or the ACT, see what your score looks like, and then decide, is this a score that boosts my application or is this a score that may detract from what my transcript and all the other parts of this application look like? Um, so for some people, they may, may be phenomenal students taking honors and AP or dual enrollment classes, um, doing well in their classes, but their SAT score doesn't match that. For those students, I might say, let's not submit your score. Let's go on the strength of all that other stuff going on because you are an amazing student. Um, again, this is a great conversation to have with your counselor uh, in the fall while you're looking at that and thinking about it. Um, there is a website, which is a great place to start when you're doing your research about who is test optional. It's called Fair Test, and Fair Test does keep an active list of who is test optional. Here in Virginia, UVA is test optional. William & Mary is test optional. Virginia Tech is test optional. JMU has been test optional for years and years and years. Uh, they really say like, really do not send us scores. We will not look at them, not for scholarships, not for anything. VCU, George Mason, all of them are test optional. So you can really decide what makes sense for you. Some of the Ivies have started to add those testing requirements back. So do make sure that you're doing your research and you know who needs it and who doesn't. Um, this PowerPoint that I am showing you all has hyperlinks in it. So um, there is a place here where you can actually click um, and go straight to the websites for um, SA2 or AC2 registration. You do this yourself. Uh, so you are going to go to the SAT's website or the ACT's website, and you are going to register yourself. The only exception is that SAT that we are going to do here at Hayfield on a Wednesday in October. And that is the one 
that you will be registering in a different way. But if you're going to take it Saturday SAT or ACT, you do it yourself. Um, so for the SA, that SAT um, school day, the one that's going to be held during a school day in October, you are not going to be able to register for that in the College Board. It, it won't show up there. It's just the Saturday dates that show up. Um, if you are a student who receives free lunch or reduced lunch, or you are an active member of Fairfax County's College Partnership Program, that is something that you have to apply and get accepted to, so you should know if you're part of CPP. Or, or if you are enrolled in AVID 11, or you will be enrolled in AVID 12, that's a class. People in those four categories can get what's called an SAT or an ACT fee waiver, which allows them to take the test for free. So you just need to shoot me an email. Please catch me by Friday, because that is when I'm leaving for the summer. So if you need one, ask me now. Over the summer, I will, in my auto reply, give you the email address of somebody that will hold on to those for the summer while I am out on, fall, on summer break. My brain is ready for summer. College essays. Uh, this is really the only place where you can um, really set yourself apart. When the colleges are looking at your application, they are looking at your transcript. They are looking at your activities. They are looking at test scores, maybe. None of that tells them anything about who you really are. So the essay is where you get to sort of say, here's what I, here's who I am. Here's what I'm into. Here are my goals for myself. Um, so the essay is a really great way for you to be able to show them more aspects of you that they can't find in any part of the application. My favorite free resource for essays is College Essay Guide, and it's literally collegeessayguide.com. And if you click on free resources, you will find a lot of information in there, including some little brainstorming activities that you can do if you're feeling really stuck and the, the writing juices aren't flowing yet, he's got some great things to kind of help get you start to think about what are your values, what are things that are important to you, what do you want to come through in that essay. Um, so those are all things to think about. Um, I would say the biggest tip that I get from colleges is that you need to be specific enough in your essay that nobody else could have written what you wrote because it's so much about you and who you are. Um, so they will say, uh, my friend at UVA will say, if you printed out a draft of your essay without your name on it, you left it on a cafeteria table, your friend could read that essay and go, I know exactly who that belongs to. Um, so that is is uh, one little method. If you're funny, it's okay to be funny. Sometimes there's a little line there. You're more than welcome to ask me or your counselor if you feel like you've gone over the line, um, but show your personality. This is where to showcase how awesome you are. Um, all right, so we are going to, oh, and um, as far as SA prompts go, uh, the Common App has already put out uh, their essay prompts. They're the same ones from last year. Um, you can Google Common App essay prompts 2024, 2025, and you'll see them there. Um, a lot of the colleges, I shouldn't say a lot of colleges. Some colleges have extra essays that you write just for them. Those are called supplemental essays. Um, and so not only may you be writing that Common App essay, but you may have additional essays that are only in specifically for that college where they say, why do you want to attend our school or uh, give you some other prompts that they may want you to write on. Um, college Essay Guy has a section where he says how to write supplemental essays. And he's got a huge list of how to write UVA essays or how to write essays for University of Chicago or whatever. So he's got specific tips for a bunch of different colleges on his website. Um, but those essay topics, unless the college has put it on their website, most colleges, you will not know those essay prompts until after August 1st when they upload their application for students graduating in June of 2025. Um, so we'll know the main common app one, but you'll have to wait a little longer to find out that other essay. 
recommendation letters. Some colleges use recommendation letters. Some colleges say we will not read college or, or recommendation letters at all. Virginia Tech is one of them. Remember, I said they had some quirks. They don't read recommendation letters. Doesn't matter who it's from, they don't read it. So you don't need to worry about sending them to tech. Um, but other colleges do want uh, recommendation letters. Remember, those recommendation letters are going to be in the college tab of your Common App. So you're not doing anything with that until after August 1st. But if you would like to have a conversation with a teacher now before you leave, you've got one more day of school to go up to that teacher and say, would you be willing to write me a recommendation letter? Um, and then some teachers will say, yes, here's what I need from you in order to write it. Um, some teachers might say, yeah, but I'm not thinking about it this summer. Remind me in August and I'll make sure you are on my list. Um, so different teachers handle things different ways. We do ask that you give them at least 30 days prior to your deadline. Notice if you ask a teacher 48 hours before that deadline, they're either going to tell you no or they're going to write you a really generic letter that isn't going to do you any favors when the college is reading that uh, recommendation letter. So do make sure for both your teachers and your counselors that you're giving them plenty of time to write you a really strong letter. In order to find out how many recommendation letters a college needs, your best bet is to go to the college's website and they'll usually lay out like parts of the application and they'll say we need one counselor recommendation and one teacher recommendation. Or they'll say, we want one from anybody you want to use. Um, there is one caveat to that. You can't have a family member write you a recommendation letter. So family members don't write recommendation letters. They need to usually be counselor or teacher. Um, on a very rare occasion, there might they might ask for somebody that you've done volunteer service with but primarily they're wanting academic recommendations. Recommendations from counselors. So our counselors have a required form that you have to complete at least 30 days prior to the date that you need that letter. Um, our school counselor recommendation questionnaire is in Schoology. I'll show you in a moment. Um, it will also be, I was having a little bit of issues trying to load it to the Hayfield website, but before I leave for summer at the end of this week, it will be on Hayfield's website in the college application forms section. Um, the questionnaire ask you, asks you things like, um, what do you think are your strengths? Um, tell us about a tough time that you've had, all kinds of things that your counselor can incorporate into that recommendation letter for you. Your counselor's recommendation is focusing on you, the whole picture as a whole student, and your teacher's recommendation letter is mostly focusing on what do you bring to their classroom um, and what will you bring to that college's classroom. So that's kind of the difference between the two letters. Um, parents and guardians or other adults that are in your life, um, we do have an optional one. Um, you know, sometimes we feel like our kids aren't bragging on themselves enough, or maybe there's some context with a family situation that you would want us to know about. You can certainly put that into the parent questionnaire. That is completely optional. It is not necessary. Students, yours is required. And again, I'll show you where that is in Naviance. I mean, sorry, in Schoology when we get there. Transcripts. So your transcript, if you remember, is one sheet of paper that shows the classes you took in ninth grade and your final grade, the classes you took in 10th grade and your final grade, the classes you took in 11th grade and your final grade. And then at the beginning of the year in, in September, it will show here are the classes that you're taking senior year, but it won't show any grades there until probably like second week in November. Um, so that is something that every college is going to want to see because again, that's the most important thing, the grades and the classes that you're taking. Um, so Hayfield will take care of submitting that transcript to the colleges ourselves. There will be a form that you will fill out where you'll put the name of the college, their address, 
let your counselor know whether or not you need a recommendation for that school, and you will hand that transcript request form to your counselor. Again, 30 days or more before that first college's deadline. Um, those transcript request forms will get redone over the summer, and they will probably be available sometime beginning of September. Um, at the very, very beginning of the school year, our counselors are trying to register all of our new students, make sure everybody's in the right class uh, before they can switch their attention to starting to work on those college applications. So we will put out that transcript request form, maybe probably like three weeks into the school year is when you'll see it come out. Um, so if you go to the website right now, you'll notice that you can't get to the transcript request form. That's because the one that you are using is not out yet. Um, let's see, let me make sure that I am looking. Ah, one thing that I will mention about transcripts is that there are some colleges that will say, again, Virginia Tech, this is another one of their quirks, um, will say, don't have your high school send a transcript. We would like for you to give us your grades yourself. Here is a portal, open up an account, and you are literally going to go in there and type honors biology, B plus, um, freshman English, A minus, and you're gonna type your classes and your grades into that form and you're gonna submit it. And that is what Virginia Tech is gonna look at when they're looking at your grades and the classes that you took rather than the transcripts that we send. So Tech doesn't take transcripts from us when you're applying to college. Um, so there are some colleges that will do, it's called a self-reported, uh, transcript. So you may see that some colleges do need that. Tech is probably the one that we encounter the most because we have so many students who apply there. So I always like to mention that one. Um, again, when you're in the Common App, you'll be able to invite your counselor as a recommender, but you're not going to be doing that until after August 1st. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop there and see if we have any quickie questions. I'm gonna take a quick sip of my drink. And then we can have students go ahead and continue to throw things into the chat for Mr. Matthews. I did wanna mention, because I do get lots of questions about financial aid and scholarships. So I wanted to mention a few things. Um, there, that FCPS Google site that I mentioned at the beginning of this session, does have financial aid resources on it. So you can certainly go there. Um, Naviance, which I'll so show you in a moment, um, does have a scholarship list in it. There's not a ton of stuff in there over the summer because scholarship organizations know that all of the counselors and the teachers are off on summer break and students probably aren't looking at that stuff. So the scholarship list is pretty short in the summer. But as we get into the fall and especially winter and spring, that scholarship list will grow. Um, and so that is something I tell students, use SOAR time to your advantage. If you're in a SOAR and um, you have some free time to work on homework, that might be a great time to go in there and see what new scholarships are in here. Um, again, if you remember, we're gonna do a financial aid and scholarship workshop in person during SOAR time this fall. Uh, which will be available for all students. Um, there will also be online scholarship organizations or scholarship and financial aid um, information sessions that will be done on Zoom. Um, College Access Fairfax is the organization that does all, all of those workshops for us. Um, they're a wonderful resource. Um, not only do they offer financial aid and scholarship workshops, but they also pay for a financial aid expert to come to Hayfield once a week, practically almost all school year. Um, so Mrs. Rousey is our financial aid specialist. I, as far as I know, she's coming back. She's phenomenal, has been doing this for years. Um, and so once those financial aid applications open, students will be able to come to my room on the days that she's here and sit down and she will walk us student through applying for financial aid. So that is something students and families that you are not on, alone on this, absolutely do that together with her. It is much better to make sure that it is done correctly the first time 
because when you make a mistake and you have to make corrections, it can get a little more complicated. So it's best to work with her and make sure that it gets done on time and done correctly. Those financial aid applications that I'm referring to open on October 1st. Um, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Uh, those of you who have older brothers and sisters who are in college now, you might know that that form changed drastically this year and that there were lots of IT snafus with it. So we are hoping that everything goes well with the FAFSA this fall. Um, so the FAFSA is the financial aid application that pretty much every college in the United States is going to use. That is how you get grants and work study and loans from the federal government. That's also how the state of Virginia um, awards money from the state of Virginia. Um, and then the CSS profile is a secondary form that some colleges will use here in Virginia. The ones that use it are William and Mary, UVA, University of Richmond and Washington and Lee. Um, the CSS profile is how colleges um, look to uh, award money that is their money. So they'll use the FAFSA to give out the money from the federal government and money from the state of Virginia, but then they've got their own pot of financial aid money and they'll use the CSS profile to determine who gets what um, out of that. One that is not on the slide that I should have put down at the bottom, it is up at the top, is that there is a form called the VASA, V-A-S-A. If you are a student who is undocumented or whose citizenship status means that you cannot fill out the FAFSA, if you stay in the state of Virginia, there is a special financial aid form that you can fill out and possibly get some money from the state of Virginia to help you pay for college. And that is called the VASA. And if you're in that situation, feel free to, to uh, check in with me in the fall and we'll make sure that you know what you need to do for that. That form should open on October 1st like the other ones. Summer checklist, we're almost done here. So this summer, if you are up for the task, um, start researching and start looking at what you think your post-secondary plans are. Remember that this is your journey. You are the one doing it. Obviously, the, the grown-ups in your life will be there to help you, but this is something that you should be the one driving this decision. It should not be one of your grown-ups begging you to get this done, right? Because this is your life and you need to be in charge of making your decisions and knowing what you want and working with your family to see what, what can our family do um, to help me get to where I'd really like to go. Um, if you're applying to colleges, you can start in that Common App if you want to. You can start brainstorming some essays that you think you might like to do. Um, you can start thinking about which teachers you might want to rec do re recommendation letters. You can wait until the fall to ask your teachers. That is totally fine. Um, some teachers are very popular, and so they might put a limit on the number of letters they can write just because they take so much time and they want to do a really good job. Um, so if you think a teacher is going to be popular, you may want to catch them tomorrow before we leave. Um, if you have a chance to visit some colleges, go on some college visits this summer. Uh, do keep in mind that when you're visiting colleges in the summer, there aren't a whole lot of people there because most of their students that are living on campus are home living with their families. And so they're not there, but it's a great idea to get a, a quickie look um, and a first look at a college. And maybe that's a place that you say, okay, I know I want to apply, but I also want to come back here in the fall when students are in session so I can see what the quad looks like with students hanging out. Um, and then there's the opportunities booklet. Many of you may remember um, when the counselors came to your English classroom back in March um, and they handed out a little booklet. Um, I do have paper versions in my room. You're welcome to pop by my room tomorrow before school or after school and grab one. Um, but the PDF version of it is in Schoology and you can grab it right there or you can even Google Opportunities Virginia and it should pop up as well. Um, I'm going to show you in just a moment all of the resources that we have in our Schoology course. Um, 
Schoology, theoretically, our Schoology course, we've asked our IT people if they can keep it active all summer because normally Schoology courses go away. They have done what they think should be the right thing to keep our Schoology course going all summer. Um, and they said that they would check after all the other courses get deleted and make sure that it's still showing up for you. So I'm going to jump out of this and I'm going to show you very quickly our Schoology course. Um, so if you are in Schoology students and you click on courses and you click on student services, look for that photo of me and the counselors. That takes you into our student services course. And as long as you're in this materials section, you'll see that I have a specific folder that is just for you. So if you open up this folder, you'll see right here, this is the PowerPoint that you are looking at right now. Um, so that is in there and ready to go. This is also one of the places that I will put a link to this video um, once we are, are done and the, the video renders, it takes a little while to do its stuff on the back end. Um, this is the classroom lesson that counselors presented in your English class back in March. Um, these are some helpful little things that I thought that you might like to have. Um, this College Resources and Links has information about books that I love, podcasts that I love, websites that I love. Um, so you may want to check that out. Um, there are tips for attending a college fair. We'll have that big one in the fall. Um, this is a timeline for junior year college planning. Um, since you all are about seniors, I'll be putting a senior year timeline in there as well. Um, and there are some other things that might be helpful. I get lots of questions about the SAT and the ACT. So here's all of my SAT and ACT uh, resources. Start with this one, frequently asked questions about the SAT and the ACT. This will probably answer every single question that you have about the SAT and the ACT right there. Um, and then lastly, once we get into the fall, we will add more, but in this college application form section right now, this is your class of 2025 counselor recommendation questionnaire. This is the thing that you have to fill out um, at least 30 days prior to your counselor writing a recommendation letter. Your counselors beg of you, spend some time doing it. If you only give them a few words as an answer, that doesn't help them write a strong letter. The more information you give them, the more they have to pull from and the nicer and, and more detailed letter they can give to your college. So help them help you and do a really good thorough job with that. That would be a great thing to take care of this summer. Um, it is a Word document, so you'll download it, you'll type it in, you'll save it, and then you'll email it to your counselor. That's how that one works. It's not a Google Doc. And then families, again, grownups, if you want to do this optional one, you are more than welcome to, and you can email that directly to the counselor. I've got more information here on financial aid and scholarships and all kinds of things. We're running out of time, so I'm not going to show you, but there is a ton of information in here. Um, the last thing that I'll show you, and this could be something that you might want to spend some time this summer doing, um, FCPS, the week of the college fair, FCPS also hosts a number of Zoom sessions and they record all of them for people to watch later. So these are all of the Zoom sessions. Uh, get a little bit wider. These are the Zoom sessions that Fairfax County offered in October of 2023. And you can watch any of these right now. If you want to know more about NOVA, you can click there. If you want to know more about scholarships, you can click here. Um, standardized testing in the college process. There's a lot of great stuff in here uh, that I highly recommend that you take a look at. Um, last thing I think um, is that I'm going to show you how to get into Naviance. Students, you should know this, but I'm just gonna re refresh your memory real quick. If you're in Schoology, you are going to click on this little square here and you're going to click on Naviance. Once you click there, it is going to take you to a landing site that looks like this. And so on this landing site, you can go into all of the different little tabs, self-discovery. Remember, this is where you can do little career quizzes and things to kind of learn more about yourself and what careers you might be interested in. Um, the colleges tab, um, 
is the one that you may want to spend a fair amount of time in this summer. There are ways for you to search for colleges that have what you're looking for. Um, in this enrichment program section, that is where you can find everything from summer camps to the occasional internship to events that are happening during the school year that don't really fit into other categories. So they call that enrichment programs. Highly recommend popping in and looking at that. Um, the scholarship list is right here. So that is where you can look and see who is accepting scholarships as of right now. And then lastly, this fall, we will have between 60, 70, sometimes even 80 college admissions representatives that are gonna come right here to my room to meet with you and tell you more about co their college, more about their admissions applications, what's important to them, what's not important to them, um, talk about their majors, talk about financial aid and scholarships. And those are typically the people that are gonna read your application. So it is really important to try to come to those if you can, because that's where you're gonna learn a lot of information and also make a good first impression on that person who will remember you when you come later. So this fall, you will start to see in the college visit section, a list of who's coming and when they're coming, and you will be able to register for those. They're not showing up yet, but in August, when you come back, when you click on that little button, you'll see a bunch of them because we will have some great visits. Okay, we're going back into our slides and I believe we are at the very end. We sure are. If you all have any questions, feel free to reach out to your counselor or to me. Remember that we are also off in the summer like you and the teachers. Um, so we will not see emails in the summertime. Um, my last day is uh, this coming Tuesday, so a week from today. So please catch me if you have a question. Catch me before I leave or else I won't see your email until August. Uh, the counselors work a little later than I do, um, but they will also be off for about six weeks over the summer. So that is all that I have for you all today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to stop the recording.